this computer, yes. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another installment of Club Muffet Talks. I'm Chris. I'm Joe. I'm Ryan, and we said we were going to do our titles because supposedly people don't know who we are. Well, it's it's true. We 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 can't assume that anyone that's listening to this has automatically listened to everything prior to okay. this. I'm Ryan. I'm an anti sociopath, um, sociopathic misanthrope. Wait, that's not what I'm supposed to say. I, I mean, I think I, 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 I'm not sure that that was entirely accurate, and I, I know I, that's not what your name tag says. I uh, my name tag uh, says Associate University Librarian for Public Services. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah, I think I think most of us are probably anti-sociopath. <laughs> that's the plot of Monster, really. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, my name is I already said my name. I'm not going to give you my name again. However, I am an instruction librarian. Yes. And I am also an instruction librarian. And, there we and, go. And I, I really should be the one that like always says that since I'm the one that wrote on the thing, hey, we should say who we are and what we do. <laughs> yeah. we, we've been doing this long enough. I think I think the, um, the general disarray and uh, confusion and, and uh, Everything else about it is is just part and parcel for the show at this point. Yeah, because nothing says you know, like we are a good library is the unprofessionalism of, of three of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I wanted to do this as a cold open, but I've been uh, I've been um, uh, what's it called when you get a group together to tell you about like how what the crappy parts of your movie that are terrible i've been focus grouped into not doing a cold open anymore there we go mm -hmm. um so instead i'll just introduce it now before we get into our uh, into our weeks and and the rest of the body of the podcast is tim allen's uh christmas classic the santa claus a body horror film Ooh, that's a good question actually uh, I put that on for my daughter the other day. My I, I went off to do something else. And my wife was watching it with her while, while doing some stuff. And I came back in the room and uh, she said, is this a body horror? And and I said, you know what? Before I put it on, I was going to say, this is my favorite body horror Christmas film that's specifically centered around Christmas. Because you could argue The Thing probably is a Christmas movie if, if you go far enough. But um, yeah, so um that made me think like uh well we talk about body horror a lot here in this library and it's also in the season so okay i see how you worked that out very good sure sure uh i i mean i can see how you would go there but i it i it doesn't it have you know a a more pleasant, happier ending than you know your your typical body horror story would. Uh, well, I mean, the fly has a has a happy ending, doesn't it? The um, oh, it does. the thing has a happy no. ending, doesn't it? No, no. People being alive at the end of those movies is a happy ending, as far as I'm concerned. That one dude only <laughs> lost his leg. It got, I mean, it got melted and probably had some horrible infection, but you know. <laughs> He's alive. The only person who dies in that movie is Jeff Goldblum. Spoilers for a fifty-year-old movie by David Cronenberg that you've that if you haven't seen before already, I don't know what to tell you. Um, I mean, yeah, let's see. I mean, I'm I'm looking at the TV tropes thing, and, and there's something like uh, there's um tropes like a uh, beauty to beast, and then Tim Allen, you know. He he's force he forcibly becomes Santa Claus, you know, in body and spirit. Uh huh. Mm hmm. I I, Brain I don't monster. think I can go with you on this one, Chris. <laughs> Man <laughs> in the machine, male malevolent mutilation. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, I think it comes down to what your phobias are. If your phobia is if you're afraid to become old and fat, then yes, it's a body horror film. Or if your phobia I... is, you know, spreading joy year round. <laughs> I mean, 
Well, you spread it one time in the year, and that one time permeates throughout the year. Yeah. I will say though, um, honestly, the third movie with the robotic um um Santa Claus, I think is this no no, the second movie with the robotic Santa Claus is even scarier. The ro- Tim Allen is a robotic Santa Claus is is terrifying. I didn't know there was a robot involved in this thing. Maybe I need to get into it. <laughs> anyway, um that was my that was my uh my little bit of a thought experiment. I'm done now. Let's get into all right. Well, not not technically our current obsession. Usually we talk about what we're obsessing over, but um, it's the end of the year. We've had a lot of time to kind of mess around with stuff and, and think back on what what's kind of consumed our lives this year. Uh, gentlemen, would you like to, to start us off? Okay, I'll start off with, uh, it's up for the Golden Globes. They were announced... Uh, People watching this will have seen this a little bit later, but they were announced this this weekend, and um, everything, everywhere, all at once was up for a number of Oscars, and it is a it is the type of film that I think you see only once in a decade. Let me put it that way. I need to see it. I've wanted to see it. I feel like it's the best multiverse movie we had this year. <laughs> Which is actually saying something. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm definitely more interested in, in that. Although I, I I was pleased to get another Sam Raimi film. I actually rewatched uh, Everything every, uh, Everywhere All at Once again. And I was amazed by the fact that it, it, I realized it's, it's a serious family drama. It is a a wild kung fu film and it's a raunchy uh comedy everywhere yeah at, all at once basically huh. yeah that that oh nagonzo science fiction film on top of that too yeah yeah it 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 it, it is a wild ride um i think that it's it's you know worth the ticket price and waiting in line to get on that ride you know uh but uh yeah if i uh one of the better movies that i saw this year i i agree with that um overall i feel like we actually had better television this year mm-hmm. than oh, yeah. movies uh but but yeah I, I would put it as one of my my favorites for the year for sure well you mentioned television what was your favorite television show of the year that's difficult uh because i i do it's it's weird too because i don't typically watch commercial television anymore i watch the tv shows that are on various streaming services i feel like we had several good uh book or comic book adaptation uh series uh this year i actually liked the uh, lincoln lawyer tv series and of course, there are a bunch of uh, superhero ones uh, this year. Uh, the ones that weren't, for uh, strictly speaking, book or comic book to uh, film. Um, let's see. Uh, second and probably last season of Russian Doll or uh, Peaky Blinders. I feel like both uh, those have had really good acting in them uh, and pretty pretty good stories. Um, our flag means death was just amazing. Fantastic. You know? Um, yeah. But I, I feel like that in the book and comic book world, we had much better TV than, than movies this year, I think. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm Sandman, once again, I don't really like Neil Gaiman in print, but whenever I see an adaptation of his work, I fall in love all over with him again. Yeah. I thought Oscar Isaac knocked it out of the park. However you feel about Moon Knight. Yeah. Oscar Isaac and that was amazing. Moon Knight was great. Moon Knight was my favorite thing from uh any of the Marvel stuff I watched. And I actually, um yeah, like I, I said before, I was starting it and then I kind of caught up pretty quickly. And there's a lot that I haven't watched. Like the Defenders was a was probably I think I might have finished the Defenders, but I ended up really hating it and it made me say I'm you and everyone else. 
I'm not going to do any more of this Netflix <laughs> stuff. I started The Punisher and it starts really slow. So I was like, yeah, I'm done. Um, uh, but yeah, um, She Hulk also did that to me where I, I'm like, where I got to maybe like episode seven or so, the, the one where she gets ghosted by a dude. And I'm like, nah, this isn't for me anymore. I, I think I'm kind of done. But Moon Which Knight. Like Moon Knight's fantastic. That show is like a, it's like Batman with uh, ancient gods. It's it's so good. What I like is you forget that Isaac uh, uh, Oscar Isaac is playing two different roles. You you forget the same actor only, playing two different roles. He does such a good job in that. He's and he's only playing two characters too. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, the second character is a total spoiler for the first episode. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. TV was kind of hit and miss for me this year. Like, um, I thought I was going to like. I started hate watching House of the Dragon, and we mentioned it on the last podcast. But I, I just, I loved it. I, I thought it was the best thing HBO has done with Game of Thrones in six years, probably. Um, Lord of the Rings show, I got two episodes in and said, I'm not, I will not finish this. I have no interest in it. Um, I was the same way. Yeah. See, I I, I, I flipped that. Um, I watched the first episode of House of Dragon and I was like, okay. And I watched all of the, the Rings of Power. Um, House of the Dragon's a slow burn, but it, like, when the, when the political stuff starts to really ramp up, like, it, it gets, it gets really good. Again, one of the problems is there's just way too much out there anymore, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. My wife and I actually started watching um, a lot of older HBO stuff just because we were like, let's let's give the new stuff some time to kind of pan out and see how we feel about it, which was a good thing because Westworld and, you know, a bunch of other stuff got canceled this year. And um, I'll throw out Rome for you. You and Hannah might like Rome. Yeah, I want to I want to try Rome. I, I, I'm really interested in that one. Yeah. Um, I started watching the Tudors. Hannah's seen Hannah. My wife is uh, a woman named Hannah. <laughs> um, she had seen the Tudors before. She asked me if I was interested in it, and I started to be interested. But it kind of, again, is like it, it. It seemed okay, but it was just kind of boring. It, it was just kind of dull to me. Um, historical drama doesn't really get me. If if you go too far back and it gets it, like the further back you go, it's the more and more boring for me, unfortunately. But um, I really liked Sam Neill in it. I thought he was fantastic. Um, we we watched uh, and that's not HBO, that's Showtime, but either way, older show. Uh, we watched Oz. Um, Oz is stupid. Um, when I like, I just I put like a Facebook status out that was like, yeah, I wasn't really expecting the de aging pill story arc in uh oz but the musical episode really picked up the series and one person who was like a, another like artsy kind of guy like uh that took a few classes with me in college said i didn't think that i'd ever see those words in conjunction with oz isn't it like a prison drama and um my response was it is a prison show drama is a stretch um then we tried to watch Six Feet Under. My wife really loved that show. Again, about at the by the time the fourth season started, I was totally checked out. It's just too much drama, too like too much angst, I guess. For a bunch of like 40 to 50 year old characters, like there's too much drama in here. I, I can't handle this anymore. Um, but yeah, mostly just, you know, older stuff, the stuff that's already been kind of rated highly, stuff that I haven't watched before that I'm interested in. Um I mean, right now we're watching Mad Men, and I I am just totally enamored with that show. Uh, we watched Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul recently. Um, anyone who says that Better Call Saul didn't have like one of the best endings in television history is wrong. Uh, and as Ryan pointed out before I before we started recording, I finished watching all of Mobile Suit Gundam, the whole thing. Um. And I could probably pull up a word doc to say what I'd what I'd recommend and what I'd skip, but um, I don't feel like doing that. Sure. Uh, oh, and there were also two little like 
like or a, a couple of little um like here's how you wasted your year on video games things from a couple of platforms and uh specifically playstation and nintendo put them out and um i put throughout the year i put 155 hours into xenoblade chronicles 3 and about 130 into elden ring um and elden ring just one game of the year so you know i i mean that game sold like 80 billion copies at this point so like everyone who is is interested has probably played it but uh xenoblade is my game of the year for for what it for what it matters and um i also got into a series called trails it is 10 games long um it's been going since 2004 and they just started the second half. Um, I don't know that I'd recommend that one though, because it's uh, a lot of reading and a lot of really um, crazy world building that goes way, way too deep and relies on you knowing everything that's going on in the, the world and the history of the world. But um, I've enjoyed it, but um, it's just so long. It's just so much. Um, sorry, I kind of took over your spot, Joe. But you start. But we talked about oh. TV, and yeah, yeah. I, I had a bit of stuff to say. So, sure. um... <clears throat> well, it, it was that thing where I was looking. I was because I was honestly, I had to like look at some things online about what came out this year because I was just all like, what happened this year? What was last year? What is time? You know, um, <laughs> and it's a flat I, circle. I, yeah well uh time is a weird soup uh the i i wrote down two movie titles and i wrote down over a dozen television titles so you know uh can i say one thing before like before we continue just just so that i can get out of the way before i forget um yeah. um the the film community as you know i'll just i'll just be blatant about it the um twin peaks fan base community whatever david lynch fan base uh lost a massive massive talent yesterday um and this is in the wake of like a half dozen really notable passings in like david lynch's group that that he works with often um and i just just going off the top the the, the person who passed yesterday was a composer by the name of angelo badalamenti uh, badalamenti uh, long last name and i'm half illiterate anyway um really big name composer um he, he's worked with david lynch forever uh this is following earlier this year the passing of julie cruz a, a singer who worked with david lynch often um uh, al strobel uh lenny von dolan kenneth welsh uh, a few years ago we we lost uh harry dean stanton uh, uh what, what sorry i forgot their name there's so many um katherine colson one of david lynch's big um i think film production assistant people maybe camera workers uh really really huge collaborator with david lynch um and i said harry dean stanton right um just a, a ton of of really big name people who were extremely talented all all passed in a very very short time span and um it's it's bumming me out a lot thinking about it uh, i just wanted to mention it because this this year alone has been really really hard to the cast of twin peaks and that's my favorite television program so kind of wanted to mention it while we were talking well did we want to move on into what the theme is this week let's do that yes okay. And what is the theme this week, uh, uh, Joseph, since you came up with it? Well, I, I, I thought it would be fun for the end of the year, a lot of people celebrating various holidays, if we uh, just spend some time talking about traditions and customs, uh, maybe even habits, because honestly, I feel like that some of these customs and traditions started off as just something your weird uncle did, you know? Uh, but yeah, that's 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 what I was looking at. Well, how do you how do you um, 
quantify because I, I saw the the definition that they give uh, that they gave for their um, their examples of like uh, or the the articles that you shared with us yeah. of um, customs and traditions and and habits. But uh, I'm wondering what your specific uh, definition of those would be. Me specifically, I uh, I really feel like that there are things that evolves um, in looking at those articles and looking at uh, definitions. One of the things that it focused on was that um, the number of people that do it, uh, the length of time that it's done, and why it's done. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with being a sort of... Um, recognition or memorial thing that you do you know there's a reason why you do it um and then if it's a single person that does it you know it's a habit if it's uh you know if more people or a larger area do it for an extended period of time then it can become a custom or 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 a tradition uh, and i agree with that i do I I, um, I will kind of disagree with it, actually. Oh, yeah? What, what do you feel? I think your tradition is something that a family does. A custom is, at least the way I use the word custom, is something a culture does. Okay. I'd go so the other way around with that. You go the other way around with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I view a custom, uh, you know, it's customary in, in Japan to bow instead of shaking hands, for example, right. that type of thing. Yeah, but then you go to something like a tradition, and a tradition is like a, an observation of a holiday. If you if you want to go with the Japan thing, I mean, it's it's also a tradition to you know. It's a traditional pray, greeting, yeah. I mean, you know, pray they're interchangeable to, to some extent. I mean, but I, I find it interesting. I'm just saying what I privately do. I think of sure. customs in charge of an entire culture. I think of tradition as a sub aspect of a culture, either a family or a group of people within that within that. Um, uh, uh, that thing. Because so we talk about traditions, uh, you know, for instance, uh, the Christmas tradition. Well, there's a lot of people in the United States that don't follow Christian tradition, uh, uh, Christmas traditions. On the other hand, um, at the same time, I feel like they would um, certainly follow the customs, the U.S. customs, uh, the customs of the United States to some extent. So I just view it differently. Well, for Christmas, I think the tradition of, of Christmas is more like the tree and the presents and the you know getting together with family like whereas the custom of it would be like getting more kind of narrow down like you uh with your freudian slip there um like uh, i see like, the, yeah, with yeah, someone yeah. with someone like well this is this is christmas and we go to church because we are christian and um view it as a a holy day and holy uh uh, like occasion, whereas some people say, well, you know, it's our, the tradition of the whole thing has nothing to do with the religion at this point. It's more of the getting together and the passing, passing among presents and, and just kind of doing stuff for other people. But um, I think it, yeah, it just <laughs> kind of just well, whether you use the term custom or tradition for that, do you guys have any family customs or family traditions? Uh, we have a the the really tiny town my my wife came from has a parade that they do every year and like a big fair that they do and it's like it is tradition at this point like uh, they've been having that for like 40 50 years however long like a crazy amount of time and it's just my wife doing that with her parents has become tradition and her doing that with our daughter now is tradition it's technically not for me because I the weekend that I was planning on going in, they had went in early and we had like a, this, this entire statewide storm front move in. Um, so I wasn't able to do that and start it as a tradition, but for something like that, I consider to be a tradition. Whereas if we, I mean, I think we're all in agreement that a habit is like a short term, like uh, almost like a tick, right? Sure. A procedure you go through on a on yeah. a on a habitual yeah it, it might not even be something that you do uh consciously like i i pick my fingernails as a habit right 
I used to bite my fingernails as a habit until um, I realized or read about how disgusting that is, in which case I no longer have that habit. I I feel like that those ha that a habit can become a custom or a tradition uh, because if it's a thing that you do and then other people start doing it also <clears throat> be and, and 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 not necessarily something like say chewing your fingernails but like i for 30 years have had a habit of whenever i pick up a jar or a container that has liquid in it i will shake it and I will say that I am activating the flavor crystals. <laughs> I don't remember why I started doing that or when I started doing that, but other people in my family do it now. And they say, oh, activate <laughs> the flavor crystals. Uh, Be careful because you might start a religion. So well, I'm just <laughs> saying. So if, if 20, 30 years down the line, you know, descended co cousins and you know whatever continue doing that and it could even become a thing where it's like we don't know why we do this we just know that we do it you know uh and, and so it can be a thing that was just the thing your crazy uncle did but now lots of people do it so i wonder if the difference there is between custom and tradition, what I wonder is, is it an example of the wider reach of a culture this this thing gets? Does that is that the the period in which it becomes a tradition, or is it the length of time? Like, oh well, like our entire town does a thing, therefore it's a tradition, or well, we've been doing this for like 200 years, therefore it's a tradition. That's that's what I really kind of wonder if like we can we can all pretty much like I, like I like we all said like yeah a habit is something you do habitually it's it's like almost a psychological thing hmm. so then what what is the the measure of a custom and a tradition semantically sorry <laughs> semantically i i i think that it is both of those things i think that it is time and the number of people um I also feel like that there are times when uh, we qualify what we're talking about because like we'll put in adjectives. We'll say a family tradition, you know, uh, or we could say a family custom depending on how we tend to phrase things, you know. Um, so I, 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 I don't know. I, I think that, um, And, and it is a weird thing when you when you look at those, okay, what is the right word for this? Because I, I do believe that uh, language is something that grows and changes person to person. There's the, the old thing, language is a virus, that's just true. And mm -hmm. or my rant about how no two people actually speak the same language, which <laughs> I also think is true. Uh, but so 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 it gets a little bit weird when you go okay, this is the right word for this. Because honestly, I believe if you say something to someone and the person you're speaking to understands what you said, you've achieved communication. You know, what, you know, your your words conveyed meaning. So, you know. Well, culturally speaking, there is something that I want to talk about. I just, just well, before we get to that, I just want to say, um, being a reference librarian, I looked up the origin of the word tradition and the origin of the word custom just to see what they say. Uh, the word tradition means to hand down. Mm -hmm. Something yeah. that's handed down from one generation to the next. The definition mm -hmm. of custom is what you're accustomed to, what you're used to. So in that way, they're a little bit different. I mean, they have the same meaning, but the connotation is slightly different. A custom mm -hmm. is something you do, and you might not know why you do. It's just something that you, that everyone seems to do. Right. And a tradition yeah. seems to be much more um, deterministic, it, much more a conscious choice to pass on a certain ritual down to another group. Yeah. So maybe that's the difference, that one is sort of a a pers purposeful 
ritual. The other one's more of an unconscious ritual. Okay. One that you do because you you might not necessarily know the source of it, but rather that it's just... It is customary from a long, long timeline. Or it's just something that everyone does and you have no idea why everyone does it. Just it's, you don't even think about it. Sure. I think a tradition is is something that it's it's I think it's a little bit more ritualized and probably a little bit more um again something that, that crosses the generations. Yeah. I'd buy that. Well, and I do think that even even if it's in a small group, that a the the thing about a tradition being a thing that you pass down or that it's a thing that you do in memory of a person or a previous event. Um because honestly, because it, it's really sounding like that typically we as a people misuse custom and tradition uh, as words. But uh, like, as an example, uh, my wife's family has a tradition of playing a specific game. They play the card game Canasta. And they had uh, an, an aunt that played the game a lot. And she actually taught our kids how to play the game. So she's been gone for a while now, but still at some family gatherings or holiday gatherings, we'll sit around and we'll play Canasta. And we enjoy it, but we can't do that without thinking about her and the times that we had gathered around the table with her. And yeah, my I know that we have taught that game to other people to continue to pass it on. In my family, it's pitch, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and see, I had a weird thing because like my family was also, also would play games at, at gatherings. But I had a weird thing where with my family, uh, we were specifically my dad and siblings, not all of us, but specifically my dad and siblings, super, super competitive. Um, and took their games really seriously. And we uh, They played uh, Pinochle, which is also a card game. And I played it a little bit, but I, I couldn't take the emotional pressure of, <laughs> of, 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 of it's like, you got to do this right. Because people would like actually get mad if you played the wrong card or, you know, lost a hand. It's like, uh, I can't believe you did that. And be mad about it. It's like, I I don't want that, you know? In our family, it was usually played for quarters is what they played for. Oh, okay. A quarter a hand, basically. Sure. So you, you're into it, but it, it, it's such a piddling amount of money that nobody really cares if they win or lose to some extent. Yeah. You care enough, but not not enough to uh, yeah. really get upset about anything. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there there would be no money involved with, with my, my family. Gotcha. It's just just bragging rights. You know? That almost makes it more terrifying because it's a... It's, uh... It's a personal. Yeah, life. that's what oh, I'm yeah. thinking. I'm thinking if you, if, you, if you, I mean, if, if you lose, a, if you lose like 75 cents that weekend, I mean, you know, okay, you lost 75 cents. Well, yeah. what did I, why did, why am I, why am I 75 cents poorer this time? Oh, it's because I lost a game. <laughs> if you don't lose anything physically, though, like that's when it's, that's when it's up here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I wanted to bring up something because you're you're talking about how like this stuff evolves over time and things change. Uh, I've seen a lot of weird talk lately in, in some circles about like you can't say this and that about like language. You can't claim to own something as, as a means of language. And I I just um as as someone with an English degree, um, yes, you can. You can do whatever you want with language. It will never stay the same. Language is not anyone's to claim ownership of, but at the same time, it's not something that you can police and uh, declare right and wrong. Um, there are rules that make speech and language easier to understand. And again, like customary and traditional language and, and everything. But um it, it will never be the same, and the language that we speak a hundred years from now will not look the same. Even if it's a, a minor thing here and there, like something's going to change, and you'll never be able to stop it. So don't try. The French Ministry of Language would disagree with you, but yes. Oh, okay. Let them. <laughs> no, it's interesting. That's one of the things that we do here in English is we accept the fact 
we have a growing language. In fact, we encourage, it's one of the reasons our spelling is so atrocious. Mm -hmm. It's because we borrow words from all sorts of languages all over the place. And we, we view language as a growing um, organic thing where there's other languages such as, like, again, I mentioned French, where they really try to make rules about what is French, what is not French, um, and what you can say in French. Yeah, English is the one, like, the one particular language that, like, that's not a hill that I would ever want to die on, because English is not even, like, its own language. It's, like, four languages all awkwardly jammed together. And that's kind of, you know, that that's also built into our cultural identity and our traditions, is that we're all, and I think maybe that's that's kind of been lost over the, the years, or maybe it's, it's, um, uh, something that people are short-sighted about but i don't that's... think it's been lost because again uh this year oxford declared going goblin is the word goblin the mode year, so or, mm -hmm. yeah, goblin mode that's right yeah um and and i mean for people like me who just live goblin mode 24 7 you know it's like <laughs> well i'm glad someone on the internet put words to this but it's nothing new to me yeah Bringing it back around just for <laughs> fun, uh, are are there things that you habitually, come, customarily, traditionally do uh, in observation of holiday times? Do you have I'll start certain up. activities or certain foods that you associate with specific holiday things? Um, Christmas really isn't the big holiday in my family. The big holiday in my family is Independence Day, July 4th. Oh, why? Uh, my parents were married on July 3rd. So that's their anniversary. Sure. I was born on July 5th. That's my birthday. So traditionally, that was the big celebration growing up. Mm -hmm. Now, it hasn't been for 20 years since you know, 25 years since I moved out of my parents' house and I'm no longer around them as, and all. But, but growing up, that was the big holiday of the year was was that weekend. Usually we traveled somewhere or we did something, had some sort of celebration. Uh, Christmas was a one night type type thing, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I'd say almost Thanksgiving was bigger than Christmas in our oh. household to some extent. Okay, we saw that's when you saw family. That's when you did things and stuff like that. Christmas was usually much more um, a personal one evening type type get together. But again, the big holiday was July third, July fourth, July fifth. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Um, no. No, just... uh, most of the stuff that I used to do, like it would be like, all right, Thanksgiving Day, it start off. Um, well, a long time ago, I would wake up at noon, right, right in time for Thanksgiving lunch at my grandparents' house. Then um, I would go to my dad's house and have Thanksgiving, like kind of evening dinner. And then I would go to my now wife's house and have really late second dinner <laughs> at, um, at their place. But um, yeah, now it's just like, well, if we can come in on Thanksgiving, then it's, you know, whoever's whoever's got their food ready in time, then we just go over there. And I haven't even seen my dad in probably a year now. So that's like, it's kind of weird how like customs and traditions and stuff like that can just stop happening. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and how easy some of them are to just be like, okay, well, that's that's not part of it anymore. It kind of makes it not a tradition at that point. Um, I I like to cook. Usually everyone else cooks. So I, I like to, maybe I'll throw in a, maybe I'll like make a pie or something. Mm -hmm. um, but no, no. Oh yeah, there, we have one that's a very important tradition. We're going to do it this week sometime. It's um when my wife and I put up our tree, we watch the um, "It's Always Sunny" Christmas special. <laughs> okay, that's that's the one. If you've seen the meme of Danny DeVito nude crawling out of a couch covered in sweat, that's the one that that comes from. And we've discussed whether or not maybe we shouldn't watch that one while putting up the tree for the next few years. But um, uh -huh. I have a feeling maybe that one's going to slip under the radar. Okay. Um, but we've been doing that for. But since we moved out, so it, it will probably continue forever. Recently, since we were since we've been doing this thing where every night after putting the baby to bed, we'd watch a one of these old shows. Um, I don't even remember how it started, but uh, 
my wife started making popcorn. I guess we just had popcorn in the shelf or whatever. So now our thing is like, all right, baby's in bed. Uh, my homework's done. It's time to sit down and get our popcorn out and watch the next episode of whatever it is that we're watching. And at this point, it's like, that's that's like letting the energy of the day come out is like, ah, it's popcorn and TV show time. Yeah. We uh, we do a few things for putting up the tree and, 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 and decorations. We have a thing where uh, while we're doing it, we will drink uh, eggnog and eat white chocolate covered pretzels uh, while we're doing it. Once the tree is actually standing, uh, Caitlin is almost always there to help us decorate. And the first ornament that always goes onto the tree is a, a little stuffed unicorn. Wow. Um, and that's just a thing that we do. Uh, and we... We do have some foods that we associate with the holiday. Uh, Christmas Eve, we always, always have tamales Christmas Eve. Um, and then we well, I started... found out, just, just as an aside, over Thanksgiving when my parents are in town, I found out they have never eaten tamales ever in their entire lives. Really? Which strikes me as completely bizarre. I'm like, that can't yeah. be true. Yeah. I, I love tamales. Sure, they're 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 yummy. In fact, they didn't really even understand what they were. And I'm just kind of like, really? Huh. Yeah, that's wild. You've I lived in Texas for 45 years and you have no idea what tamales <laughs> are. That doesn't yeah, that's right. that, that's weird. It, it's it's n almost, not quite, but almost <laughs> like, oh, you, you you drink sweet tea here? It's like, <laughs> yeah. You don't? Know? <laughs> but uh, we've been doing a thing where we will do like the whole turkey dinner thing. But we will only do it either Thanksgiving or Christmas. We won't do it both. So like this year, we did the whole Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving turkey. So then this Christmas, we're doing <laughs> uh, homemade macaroni and cheese with brisket, you know, to yeah, I switch it up. That. And then next year, we'll do something different for Thanksgiving and do the turkey for Christmas. How about uh, like activities or movies or shows that you do? Do you do anything like that with holidays? Not really. No, not really. Yeah. I remembered something, by the way. Okay. I remembered a, a, a thing this year that I would highly suggest, that I would highly recommend that I've done over the year, throughout the year. And that is um, a little thing called continuous positive airway pressure. Ah, it's a machine that helps me not die at night ah i recommend it yeah i will mention something joe that i thought yeah. is interesting it's not really a tradition anymore um because <laughs> technology has moved on from there and also the way that uh um uh, college football ncaa football has now has a playoff system uh-huh but I remember around uh, New Year's uh, when they had the bowls and stuff like that. Back in the day, there were multiple bowls and there was no playoff system. So how well you would do in a bowl game would depend on how badly the other player, other other teams um, were doing and, and stuff like that. So I remember having a t multiple TV sets uh -huh. in a room with my family, my various you know aunts, uncles, and cousins, stuff like that. Because they're watching the main game on the color uh, on the color TV, but there would be black and white TVs in there as well to know how the other bowl games are going, <laughs> so they have an idea of whether or not they're going to win the national championship or come close or whatnot type of thing. Now, how amazing is it that these days you could you could get all that up on different streams on a computer? Yeah, and hook that into like a single HDMI cable, and then just like arrange your your browsers or whatever. So well, it doesn't even happen that, that way anymore because they're, they're moving on to like a 12-player team playoff now for the national championships, which is something they didn't have back in the day. It was literally how badly you beat the other team. Did you beat them badly enough uh, that the other team that was in contention for the national championship maybe had a close game? Oh, no, they had a close game. You had a blowout. You win type of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
by the way, sorry, it's this time of year. Um, the cold air has infected my lungs. Something. <laughs> Did I mention la- uh, any time on this podcast that um, I got COVID last year right before we... Uh, I didn't know about it, but um, it started to appear right as we were getting into the hospital to to uh, um, have the baby. Oh, I remember. I just assumed that it was my normal uh, holiday funk. Um, So that was really, that was a really intense and fun experience. Wouldn't recommend it though. Zero. I'd recommend recommend the baby. Babies are cool. Yeah. I, 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 I enjoyed my, my children when they were children and now they're adults and I still enjoy them. So that's, that's good. Now here's something I, I also forgot about that. I, I mentioned today, I would also recommend, and that is a uh, newborn baby smell. Oh, newborn if, baby smell is wonderful. If you, if any of your family members has welcomed a new baby, just grab them up and just snip the top of their head if you can. And remember that because it's it's like it's heavenly. Yeah, it makes me want to like I I thought about it and I remembered it perfectly and I thought, man, I want to take a nap now. (laughs) I want to wrap up in a blanket and be like, ah, that was. It makes me wonder if anyone's ever done any scientific research on new newborn babies smells. Uh, there's a lot of of weird stuff that happens when a baby's born, and it's like chemicals and hormones and all this other stuff that's specifically designed to make you like fall in love with them and they also this might be just some crap i saw on tv or something but they also more favor the dad because like evolution airily you like you would be more willing to like accept the baby and not want to like dash them against the stones if they look like you back you know when we were all apes i also point out that that the english language is kind of mean because while it's very simple for a for a baby to go da, it's extremely hard for them to go ma. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, it took forever <laughs> for Ezra to start saying ma. Like for like literally, she was like eight or nine months old before she started saying ma. She was saying uh, dad da and da, making da sounds at like four or five months, like really quickly. Uh, but yeah, ma just took forever. I, I don't know what what the deal is with that. Um. But she's also weird in how she's developed because she doesn't quite have teeth in yet, but she's walking. She's walking very quickly, too. Frighteningly so. This is the Chris Talks About Ezra for 20 Minutes podcast again. It's, I'm, it's I'm happening again. I'm just surprised again. you haven't held up your phone with pictures yet. That's all I'm thinking. I, I'm more that surprised. That was not that an I invitation. <laughs> I have, I'm surprised that I haven't hijacked the stream and just started going through my my facebook gallery of pictures honestly that'll that'll be an extra episode that'll be a special episode sure sure well did you want to move on and talk about maybe institutional uh, um um traditions and things of that nature uh yeah we can uh one of the things we've done here at moffat library is we usually have a number of traditions that we've carried on for years and years and years now um one of them, which I know has been going on for maybe 30 years now, is we hold um, basically parties for the students at the end of the fall and spring semesters. And that's something that's been going on long before I was here. So it's got to be at least 30 years. Yeah. I I feel like that that is a good thing for the library to do. I mean, we we do rely on our student workers so much to so so to to give back to them a, a little bit even, I think is an important thing for us to do. There was a tradition, um, you know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put my uh, my old employer on blast. Mm-hmm. Hope I don't need him for anything anytime soon. No, um, their, their thing at the end of the year, like at, uh, right before our semester ends here, we have a, like a staff lunch and we just hang out. The place I came from had a staff meeting that was the all hands on deck. Everyone get together. There is a lunch involved, but we're also going to talk about the new systems coming at the in the next uh, year and talk about all the stuff that's happened and kind of give like a report on what everyone's done that was significant. And um, I'll just say that the end of the 
the end of the year lunch is a much much better way to top off a year i i like the idea that everyone's like yeah our staff lunch cool as opposed to great our eight hours staff meeting day at the end of the year and someone who knows the institutional history of this place too there have been some failed ones there was one where every year for halloween everybody in the library gets dressed up and for a for a building full of introverts that did not go over well <laughs> i i i did wear a costume this year on halloween but traditionally <laughs> traditionally i yeah. i don't yeah i appreciate that we um there are places that are like, no, you absolutely like professionally, you cannot dress up for Halloween. It's it's uh like even if even if we don't have a staff like uniform or whatever, like it's still beneath the professionalism to to do like a Halloween outfit or something. That's, that's ridiculous. That's stupid. Well, it is, and it's <laughs> it's it's actually really narrow in an in an imaginative kind of way because there are so many characters in so many different things. You could come to work in regular clothes and be in a costume, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I'm thinking even in hospitals, just something as simple as a clown nose would be simple, you know? Something oh, sure. Simple you could do. Well, I mean, or, okay. Just like you work in a hospital and, 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 and you wear the clothes that you wear to the hospital but it's Halloween, so you're actually dressed as, you know, a character from ER or Grey's Anatomy or Scrubs, you know, it's like, and, and I mean, you could do something where like, you know, when the administration wasn't around, you had that character's name on your name tag or, you know, whatever. <laughs> or but, somebody just wear a mask or something. I mean, it's very simple, those things yeah. you could do in places yeah. like that. Well, I'm picturing the disappointment of someone asking who you are and you have to say, I'm Zach Braff. <laughs> the ma I'm the man Zach Braff for Halloween, guys. I hey, because I, because I this is I have to uh, because I have to uh, ask this as as a subject because it's me. Um, are boss fights in video games tradition, or are they necessity? Who? I'd say they're a trope. Tonight. What's that? They're a trope. Okay. Because there are games that don't have boss fights, and those are a different type of game. Then, then how do you, how do you end the conflict of of anything in a video game without some kind of like final challenge or or test? Well, there are riddle games, there are mystery games, there are strategy games. There's lots of different ways you can do that without a final boss. But is that not a final boss? No. Hmm, interesting. So you're telling me that a conversation between two people that has an outcome to end the, the game or to conclude it or something, or a final puzzle or a bigger army in an RTS, that's not a final boss. Well, it may not be a final. It might be may not be a um, a a bigger army. A lot of strategy games and uh, anticlimactic. Yeah, but then is that not is that not poor? Is that not an element to criticize? Not really. I mean, the idea of a boss game is that there's something at the end which is ten times more difficult or or five times more difficult than anything you've seen before. And that doesn't happen in a lot of games. It happens in a lot of games, but I think it's a trope of certain types of video games. Okay. Specifically the ones that were made for arcades mm -hmm. where they don't want you to win because they want you to keep putting in more coins into the into the arcade. That's where that, that comes from. <clears throat> Correct. Email me if you want to argue about it. <laughs> that's it. That's I'm done. That's that's all I had to say. Library at msutexas.edu. <laughs> Subject line: Chris is wrong. <laughs> Please, I'll accept it. Anyway, <laughs> I, I think I'm I'm I've pretty much exhausted myself from all of this. We had a really long conversation, so 
Okay. Um, What's going on around about town? Anything coming up? Anything going on? Do you know there's an event called Christmas happening? It's in two weeks. Christmas is in two weeks. Yeah. A, a little less now. Yeah. You're making me really want to go into my rant about the fact that um, Yashua Ben Yosef was not was not born in in, in December, but I'm not. Would have been a really that. cold baby if he was. Yeah, I've I've heard that <laughs> argument too. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, Christmas is in two weeks. My daughter's first birthday is in three. Actually, that kind of sucks for Ezra having a birthday during that time. <laughs> yeah, I know. We we've been thinking about does she have. Does she have one big Christmas, one big birthday, or two small of both? And we kind of just decided on, well, two small of both, but we have the celebration be big. We uh, just had her one year, uh, her smash cake pictures done uh, oh, Sunday. We saw a thing about uh, people who have birthdays near uh, Christmas. And a, a thing that one family did, which I thought was sort of fun, was that they... And of course, I mean, some of this depends on the size of your your residence. But they put up two trees. And they put up oh. a Christmas tree, and they put up a birthday tree. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, so they have you know different kinds of ornaments and stuff, and the things that go under the birthday tree are birthday presents specifically for the birthday person, and then the Christmas tree has Christmas gifts and you know things for other people than the birthday person oh you know what there's, a, there's cool. a there's a custom or maybe this is a tradition i don't know in my family where you have to take down the tree before the first oh i like to have it up well but yeah no we, my wife loves to have it up yeah we used to have a tradition and we talk about how things pass away uh, uh and this is a thing that just sort of stopped happening uh, but we used to do a thing where we would have sort of a second Christmas um, on New Year's Day uh, with our friends. Because a lot of us uh, worked in retail or things, and a lot of times you'd end up having to work Christmas Eve or even Christmas Day. But usually would have January 1st off. Uh, so we'd have a January 1st get together with our friends and uh, eat a lot of food and exchange presents and tell stories and things. And we did that for a number of years. Um, and then people moved away and stuff happened and, you know, life and, and we don't do it anymore. Yeah. I used to do the same thing. I just realized that fact that for about five years, <sighs> um, I got together with my friends that I've known since, since I was 12, um, uh -huh. basically. Um, uh, and we'd have something during uh, New Year's, but uh, they have kids now, and they're in different parts of the state, and there's all sorts of other things going on. Now, he, I've got a question for both of you. Do do either or both of you do the cabbage and black eyed peas thing on New Year's? Is that a tradition that that you've done? My parents' family, that 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 my family uh, did do that. Uh, my wife and my family, we don't do that because there are too many people in the family that don't like black eyed peas. Uh, we would do, we would probably do like, we would do cabbage. Um, well, and that, or, or, you know, like the, like uh, corned beef and cabbage for like St. Patrick's Day. I would totally do that. Um, you know, um, but no, we don't, we don't do the black eyed pea thing uh, anymore. Hmm. Well, that's lucky. Can't well, wait. my my sister hated uh, black eyed peas, but she would eat them specifically on that day. And she had a rule that you had to eat a number of individual peas equal to your age. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that whole thing about cabbage being a uh, holding money or whatever it's called that needs to start paying off because i'm really sick of eating cabbage <laughs> <sighs> but anyway um 
I'm going to say that my part in this is over because I need to get water and I'm very thirsty well, and I have a headache. Is there anything you need to talk about coming up uh, before we, we head out? Uh, oh, yeah. We're about to, uh, at some point in like the next month, we are going to um, implement our new uh, catalog. And mm -hmm. a little after that, we're going to have a new website to go along with it. And in the next few months, we might be dropping Academic Search Complete. Uh, we are replacing it, of course, with um, Gale. We have a huge amount of new Gale databases um, that are primarily going to be our uh, our main catalogs and or our, our main databases, rather. Um, and in some ways, they the Gale databases are much better and more. Um, uh, more broad than some of the EBSCO host ones. We are going to keep a lot of our EBSCO host databases. Um, and we do have, of course, you know, Canopy and Swank, all that stuff. Um, I really haven't been saying yes to a whole lot of stuff. So if there are movies you want me to put in our, in our databases for the spring up through the summer, feel free to, to make those requests because I've given us a really big buffer for that because uh, at the start of the semester, it was looking kind of dicey. So I made sure to give us uh, some room. But um, in terms of everything else, though, like uh, pretty much all of our other big databases are staying. Um, the one, the, the, the reason I mentioned that one, though, the, the academic search, I don't know if it's staying. I don't know what the future is going to look like for that. We just kind of kind of playing it by ear but right now we're all trying to um get a better grasp on gale because that's the one that's going to be our big all in all subject or major subject uh database for the future so and we'll send something out to the fact in the future but it looks like the biggest changes are a lot of the the well starting on the 19th um the pearl links that most people have will stop working that's a big yeah. problem. That's going to be yeah. that's going to yeah. be huge. Um, which doesn't really matter because most of those things those linked to will probably be going away if they're actually articles um, in by August, released by you know July August of, of next year. Um, I will say this to anyone who is a professor. I don't know how many professors listen to our show, but uh, start saving stuff as PDFs now. As long as you put it up on D2L, you are allowed to post articles. Um, your classes but only through d2l um yeah, another thing is cool, also be happy we may be losing some of our newspaper databases um access some of the major newspaper type stuff um just because of the stuff we have now is through ebsco and some of that might be going away and obviously of course if if you need any help if you want to schedule a research appointment or something that's what we do and especially in the spring there's not as much uh, going on there are fewer classes that need like fresh instruction so we'll be uh, a little less busy we, we won't be like back-to-back -back classes like we are in the in the fall which also if you have a request for that and you're unsure then I would recommend requesting that for the spring at, at the very least because you'll have an easier time reaching one of us uh, Joe and I do the um, the majority of of this stuff but ryan's been doing it for like 20 years yeah, about so, 15 i was i didn't start okay. off doing it okay but yeah he's uh you know all of us are are familiar with it and all the librarians uh theoretically are are all uh very familiar with this stuff too and if any one of them tells you that they can't help you then um well god help them i guess <laughs> um but in in terms of just the public service and re reference stuff at the moment uh we're probably gonna cut back on workshops in the fall or in the spring rather just because they don't get as much traction if there's anything you'd like us to cover or any kind of workshop or program or anything you'd like to see us do then feel free to you know send us an email or something say that you'd like that you or people in your class or if you're a professor if you want us to do something for your class then please let us know. I mean, that's why we're putting this out in December and letting you know, because uh, stuff might start filling up really fast, depending on how things look in the spring. So um, that's all I've got. 
Uh, yeah, we uh, on campus and, and around town, there are things happening specifically for the holiday, uh, but there's also a lot of things that uh, are just shut down and aren't happening because of the of the winter break. Uh, so, I mean, like on campus, we just had uh, the commencement ceremony for the fall, but now we're we're entered into the time period when students aren't on campus, um, and that'll be the, that way for like four weeks before anything is really happening on on campus. Uh, I do know that like the Wichita Falls Public Library downtown is continuing to do their story times on Thursdays. Uh, and I encourage anyone to check out the events calendar on the MSU webpage uh, or to check out, uh, I believe it's discoverywichitafalls.com, yeah. which has uh, Wichita Falls events. Um, and of course, if you have something that you'd like us to mention uh, on our podcast, or if you have comments, questions, suggestions, just drop us a line, library at msutexas.edu. Oh, and Festival of Lights is on, I forgot to mention that. Festivals of Light, uh, the, the Fantasy of Lights uh, is on until the day after Christmas. Yeah. We we took Ezra there Saturday night and she just, she she loved it. She had a, or it was Sunday, so sometime over the weekend. We took her there and she had a blast. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I, I think that that's, that's all we can really talk about right now for that. Uh, hope I think that there will be more things going on uh, in January, February, and we'll talk probably more about those in January and February. Um, looking at in January, January's podcast, we're going to be talking about firsts. It'll be the first of the year, and we'll talk about various firsts in our lives. Um, wish everyone out there a happy and safe holiday season. Um See you guys in a year. <laughs> Merry right. Christmas, happy holidays, happy new year. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, you only have this one life to live. So, so do that. <laughs>